Okay, so a lot of people are going to be surprised that they're going to get this simple math question wrong. Now, the question is, without using a calculator, arrange these numbers from least to greatest. Let's go to take a look at the numbers. We have 4.2, absolute value of negative 6, 4 and 5 eighths, uh, negative 2.5, and negative 3. Again, we want to uh, arrange these numbers from least to greatest without using a calculator. All right, now, if you could figure this out, well, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, we'll walk through exactly how to solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, so here is that list. Again, we want to arrange these numbers from least to greatest. All right, let's go to take a look at the answer. The correct answer is the following. All right, so from least to greatest, again, uh, numbers are increasing this way. Our smallest number here is negative three, and our largest number here is absolute value of negative six. So we have negative three, negative 2.5, 4.2, 4 and 5 eighths, and the absolute value of negative six. All right, now, if you got this right, well, that is fantastic. We have to celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face and A plus, a 100% and multiple stars. So you could tell your friends and family that indeed you know how to compare numbers on the real number line or real numbers. All right, so this is a huge topic in mathematics, i.e. Um, the number system that we use. Now, for most of you, okay, all the way up until about, oh, I would say maybe Algebra 1, certainly Algebra 2, the numbers uh, that we are working with is what we call the real number system. But as you get into more advanced mathematics, we uh, uh, obviously we still keep working with the real number system, but we start learning a new number system as well. That's called the complex number system. All right. So again, number systems are a big deal in math, but we got to really make sure we understand the basics, i.e. the real number system. And the most important thing, uh, or at least one of the most important things, is to be able to order numbers. In other words, compare two numbers. Hey, what number is smaller? What number is greater? Well, let's go ahead and get into this right now. All right. So we're talking about the real number system. So when we're talking about real numbers, it's a good idea to think of the real number line. All right, so basically it's just a line with zero in the middle. And uh, as we go uh, from left to right, numbers get larger. Okay, so this is the main idea here. And to the right of zero is going to be positive numbers. So all these numbers here are positive. To the left of zero in this direction, all the numbers are negative. But the main kind of concept here, as we go from left to right, numbers are increasing as we go from right to left numbers are decreasing. All right, now again, hopefully this is uh, you know pretty uh, you know, basic stuff for most of you out there. Now the real numbers okay, contain a lot of different numbers. We're not gonna get into this in this particular video because we're gonna be focusing on um, just ordering numbers effectively, but there's a subset to the real numbers, which would include, this is kind of do a quick review real fast, I can't help myself, so the first is the counting numbers or the natural numbers, okay? So basically this is naturally occurring numbers. So when we look outside, how many trees do we see with our eyes? Well, we see one tree, right? Or two trees or three cars or four birds. We, this is what we call counting numbers or naturally occurring numbers. So these numbers would be like one, two, three, et cetera, et cetera. Now, uh, this concept of zero, right, is a real, matter of fact, let me just put this right here, natural numbers or counting numbers. So when we include zero to our set, because someone, you know, invented this number, they say, hey, listen, uh, I don't see any birds, so we need a uh, some sort of symbol that represents, you know, nothing. Well, that is zero, so these numbers right here are the whole numbers. Now, if we take the positive whole numbers and the negative whole numbers, what we have here is what we call the set of integers. All right, so what do you think are the other two um, components to the real number system? So we have integers, counting numbers, whole numbers. Uh, so what we're missing is what we call the rational numbers. 
and uh, rational numbers and irrational numbers. All right, so rational numbers and uh, generally this um, uh, um, uh, symbol, cannot symbol, letter, excuse me, <laughs> kind of lost my train of thought there, that represents rational numbers is Q. Now, I'm not quite sure why it is Q, but oftentimes that's how it's represented. Maybe some of you out there actually know. If you do know, put that into the comment section. So uh, Q is the set of rational numbers, and rational numbers are numbers that we can express as fractions of integers. So in other words, like right here, we have the fraction 1 half, we can construct this fraction of two integers where the numerator and denominator are one half. Uh, then over here, uh, negative one half is also a rational number. So any number you can uh, write as or express as a uh, fraction made up of integers like say 0.75, that's uh, three fourths, is a rational number. Then you have numbers like the square root of three or pi, and these numbers uh, basically, when you go into your calculator, you're going to have non-terminating, non-repeating uh, decimals. So these are what we call irrational numbers. But this is basically the whole real number system. But the main idea that we need to understand here to order numbers from least to greatest is that numbers are increasing in this direction and decreasing in this direction. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it right now. So the first number here on our lovely list, the smallest number, is negative 3. All right, so I'm just going to kind of whittle through these numbers one at a time. So we'll put this on our real number line. Now, you don't have to put it on a real number line to uh, solve this problem, but I'm going to do this because I think it's a good visual aid here. All right, so uh, negative 3, that's off our list. So we're looking at our list. We're just going to look for the next smallest number. What do you think that is? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at it. The next smallest number is negative 2.5. So we'll put that to the right of negative 3, okay? Because negative 3 is smaller than negative 2.5, right? So this is really important. You understand that. So you have negative 3 and negative 2.5 if we wanted to use an inequality symbol. So you want to go this way, right? So this is less than, this symbol looks like an L, okay, this is greater than, and a good way to kind of remember this, uh, well, one, uh, there's a lot of different ways to remember inequality symbols, but uh, one good way is to think of the, uh, the inequality symbol as like a, the mouth of an alligator or something like that, you know, here's my lovely little alligator, and it likes to eat the bigger value. All right, so negative 2.5 is greater than negative 3. Okay, so what do you think is going to come on our list next? Well, actually, what I'm going to do is we're going to take care of the largest value, and that is the absolute value of negative 6. Okay, so the absolute value of negative 6, absolute value is a big topic in math, but basically, I'll just tell you very briefly, the absolute value of negative 6 is 6, and the absolute value of 6 is also 6. So the absolute value just basically means the distance a number is from zero. So negative six is six units away from zero on the number line, All right? So again, this is a big topic, but you just need to know that the absolute value of negative six is six. So we're gonna put that way over here. Now I did that because most of you that probably had a tough time with this problem, uh, I suspect probably could have gotten these values, but maybe these two values right here, uh, got a bit confusing for you, right? 4.2 and 4 and 5 eighths, which is larger. Now, if you figure this out, if you like say, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, this is easy. Well, that is fantastic. But if you struggle with this, well, we're going to go ahead and see exactly how we can determine which is greater and we're, uh, which is smaller. But before we do that, I need you to do this. Which, of course, is, by the way, I really should kind of go down here and show you this. Typically, I'm pretty good at this. I try to put my subscribe button right before I say, hey, look, we're going to take the next step. But in this case, obviously, I made an error. But I'm not, uh, you know, down on myself because here is an opportunity for you to say, all right, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I'm going to hit that subscribe button so we can finish up this problem. Well, I'll tell you one thing. It's a joy to make math videos. I love teaching math. You know, this is not something that I look at as work. Now, it does take effort and creativity and, you know, thinking, you know, and, uh, you know, I actually have to put in some time to make these videos, but I don't look at it as work. I look at it as an opportunity to help people. And, you know, that's a great feeling to be able to kind of serve 
But my objective is to reach as many people as I possibly can. And the only way I'm going to be able to do that is to convince you to hit that subscribe button. And if you're going to do that, hit that notification bell as well so you can get my latest videos. All right, so uh, let's go back up here. And again, what I was trying to, uh, you know, kind of have a nice flow in this video was to get to this part. And I suspect that most of you that had a tough time with this problem could have gotten confused at this part. In other words, is 4.2 greater than uh, 4 and 5 eighths or is 4 and 5 eighths greater than 4.2? So how can we determine this? Remember, we said that we're not going to be using a calculator in this problem. All right, now uh, here is a question for you. Matter of fact, I already asked the question, but put this into the comment section. How do you think we can determine uh, which is a bigger number or which is a smaller value between 4.2 and four and five eighths. Put that into the comment section. I'll show you one method uh, that you could use and let's go to take a look at that right now. All right, so what I'm going to do is write 4.2, this 0 0.2, I'm gonna think of uh, that decimal as the fraction two tenths. So 4.2 is equivalent to the fraction four and two tenths. Now, if you know the decimal equivalent of five eighths, well, you could turn this fraction into a, a decimal, but basically we, we need to either have two fractions or two decimals to determine which is smaller, which is bigger. Okay, but uh, right here, I'm gonna go ahead and write this 0.2 as two tenths. Okay, so I have four and two tenths and four and five eighths. Well, I really can't, I mean, we have four right here, but we need to kind of figure out which is larger, two tenths or five eighths. Okay, so the only way we can compare these two fractions is to make them equivalent or, in other words, get these uh, denominators to have the same lowest common denominator, right? Now, we don't even really need the LCD. We just need to make the denominators the same so we can kind of get new uh, numerators here. So what I'm going to do is just real quick, I see 10 and I see 8. And I was like, you know what, let's just turn this into 80. So I'll multiply this by 8, which means i got to multiply the numerator by 8. And then I can multiply this denominator by 10. So I have to multiply that numerator by 10. So these are easy numbers to work with. And the whole objective here is just to get equivalent uh, denominators so I can s compare the numerators. So let's go ahead and take a look here. All right, so when we do this, we have 4 and uh, 16 over 80 and 50 over 80. But we're really comparing these two parts. Okay, so which is the greater value? Well, this is the greater value. So 4 and uh, 4 over 16, or 4 and 16 over 80, which of course is 4.2, is smaller than uh, 4 and 5 eighths. All right, so we can just go ahead and finish up the problem, and here we go. So we have 4.2. Remember, it's gonna be to the left of 4 and 5 eighths because it's a smaller value, and then we have 4 and 5 eighths. So here is our final answer. Okay, now you might be uh, saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, this is so basic, it's so easy. Well, you'd be surprised. You know, I think a lot of times uh, in math, a lot of people uh, believe they understand the basics better than they actually do. They're like, yeah, I get this stuff. You know, I am an expert at fractions, uh, order of operations, PEMDAS, and decimals, and real numbers, and whatnot. I can tell you, as somebody who's been teaching this subject for decades, most people struggle, not most people, but if people are having a tough time with math, I can almost guarantee you that they are, are you know, they need improvement, let's just say, on fractions, order of operations, positive and negative numbers. These are very kind of classic weak areas, but the great news is they're not that difficult to improve. So if you need to work on your math skills, uh, I have some couple options here for you. One, I have a ton of additional videos on my YouTube channel on all these topics, but uh, really I think um, you kind of want to take a more organized approach. So you may want to check out like my pre-algebra course. Okay, this is stuff that I teach in my pre-algebra course. If you're not a math student, I have two great courses for you. My math foundation course, that's really, really basic math and arithmetic. But, you know, it's, we're talking about some of the stuff that uh, we uh, discussed in this video. And if you want to take it a step further, uh, check out my math skills rebuilder course where we go over basic math and then we get into algebra, geometry, and some other stuff. But uh, hopefully this little video helped you out. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.